So let's go over why I believe that the Canon Rebel EOS T7i or that series, which would include the SL2, the T7i or the 7070, is the best camera still, even in 2018, a year after they hit the market, why they're still the best for beginners. I'm gonna give you seven reasons why. Before you start arguing over what cameras are better, if Sony's better, if Nikon's better, blah, 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 watch this video, because I'm saying the best for beginners, not the best overall. It's an important distinction. So watch this video, tell me what you think. If you wanna disagree, I'll argue all day. But I think you're going to learn something from here if you don't know anything about cameras and you're looking to buy. So watch this video. So number one, this camera is designed with beginners in mind. The software is set up with an extremely easy interface, makes it extremely easy to use. There's very little guesswork here and you don't have to go digging through the entire manual to learn all these different modes on here because it has what I call the easy mode, which is a self-explanatory picture like diagram to show you how to do things. Okay, so the software is specifically designed for beginners on this, the T7i, the SL2, and the 77D, okay? The SL2 is their base model, which is basically a stripped down version of the T7i. The T7i is more geared for advancements in photography. It's got uh, more options in the viewfinder. So and there's many videos that show the difference between those two. And then the next step up is the 77D. If you're somebody who is looking to really advance into photography, like if you're taking classes at school or something, the 77D may be the best option if you're a beginner. If you're just screwing around and you're gonna, you don't know if you're gonna like photography yet, but you may, you're, you, you know, it's totally new to you, the T7I is an excellent option. If you know for a fact you're just getting this camera for video work, you don't care about photography, and you want something that'll shoot excellent video extremely easily, right out of the box, and you don't have to do a lot with it to get good quality video, the SL2 is a good option. All right, so reason number three is going to be the features. And when I say features, I mean like the flip screen that's also a touch screen. The best autofocus in the business, a lot of people would argue. And at this price point, definitely the, the best autofocus. And that's gonna be important. And I'll get more into that here in a second. Uh, the dual pixel autofocus, the live view photo mode, which basically is where you can hit this button here, touch the screen, shoot the photos. It's that simple. Kind of like on your cell phone. Okay, so if you are not comfortable in the viewfinder, here's another great feature for a total beginner who doesn't want to miss the focus or is, is struggling in the viewfinder. Okay, so reason number four, I'm gonna to have to go with the lens options. The fact that Canon has so many lenses, period, but on the low end, they have a lot of inexpensive lenses under $200 that produce excellent quality that you can use in a lot of different situations. I'm using one right now, I'm using the 24 millimeter F2.8, it costs around 125 bucks. Um, this is one of like four or five lenses that I would recommend under $200 in the Canon lineup that gives excellent quality on this model, the SL2 and the 7070, and basically all of them. But, but in a lot of the other, like let's say for example, the G7, if you look at their lens options for that specific camera, they're extremely expensive and they're limited. You're not gonna have a lot of options. So again, that is not a uh, beginner friendly like this camera would be or this line of cameras. Like I said, I keep going back, the SL2, 7070, and the T7i. Okay, so keep that in mind because at some point you're gonna to wanna to upgrade the lens. With the lens options, you have the, just to name a few, you can go with a 24 millimeter, 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter F1.8, which is one of the staples that I would recommend you get fairly quickly. Uh, everybody gets a zoom. Uh, you've got third party lenses you can get. All of these lenses are under $200. Okay, you're not gonna find that in a lot of the other cameras. Another thing to consider when you're looking at cameras as a beginner, keep in mind those lenses because you don't wanna get a camera, get into a camera system where the lenses are ridiculously priced because some of them get really expensive really quickly. So reason number five is the fact that it has just an excellent auto mode. 
If you have no desire to ever shoot manually or advance your knowledge of photography or videography or anything like that, you can put it in auto mode and just go. And it is great. And the reason being the dual pixel autofocus keeps everything in focus and it gives you great video results, great pictures. You Focus you'll find at, the more you play around with the cameras is one of the problems that some of the other cameras have. So again, that takes me back to this being the best for beginners. Those other cameras, the autofocus is lacking in a lot of ways. So the user has to maintain the focus where if you're a beginner, you don't want to deal with all that. You know, maybe you don't even know how. So it's good to have a camera that will maintain that focus. So right out of the box, the autofocus on this is fantastic. The features are really easy. You don't have to do anything. You just put it in an auto mode and go. That's it. You're good to go. So that is definitely a selling point for beginners in my opinion. So my sixth reason is going to be that because this camera is so easy to use and so beginner friendly, it is extremely easy to learn and advance your skills in photography. Um, I had the camera for about six months and I had started shooting manually because I felt so comfortable with it and because I was learning everything so quickly and it was very easy for me to understand because I didn't have to go through this huge learning process. The camera basically showed me how to do things and I did it. And from there I was able to kind of keep evolving and learning and, and moving forward comfortably at a nice pace because the camera was extremely easy to use. And like I said before, the software, and it all starts to, to mesh very well together. It's, a, it's just a really, a really fun process. And, and again, that is, there's something to be said about that. And, it, and when you're beginning in something that the whole experience is fun and you're having a good time. And that's, that's part of what this camera did for me, helped me advance through all of that stuff into getting, shooting manually and now I feel like I have almost total control of the camera when I'm using it. Okay, so my seventh and final reason why I believe this is still the best camera for beginners is because once you get more evolved and come out of that beginner mode, then this camera has a lot of excellent features for somebody who's a little more advanced. So you're not just stuck with a beginner's camera. Okay, so for example, you've got a mic port. You've got the ability to shoot raw files, which are files you can take to a computer and do a whole lot with in post-processing. Um, you've got the flip out screen, which is excellent for vlogging and stuff like that. You've got in-camera image adjustment options. So you can get in there and adjust the sharpness, the contrast, the saturation, the color tones. You can do all that and shoot and shoot your video after you've made the adjustments. You don't have to take that to post-processing. This is all stuff you will learn as you become more comfortable with the camera, but they're more advanced. Some of these things, not all of them, obviously the touchscreen, but some of this stuff is more advanced. So you're not just stuck with a beginning camera. Um, also, it's got the ability to shoot time-lapse. It's got Wi-Fi. it's got NFC, the NFC chip. So you can just put it up next to your phone on that little NFC mark there and they'll, they'll link up. So in its totality, this camera is just an excellent option for beginners and it also is an excellent option for when you start to learn and move on to that next level. So once you get there, all these features are still there. Now the one drawback to this camera that everybody's gonna harp on is the fact that it doesn't have 4K, okay? So I'll say this, this camera I would put the image quality at 1080p at 60 frames a second with some good lenses up against pretty much any camera out there, especially in this price range and in well up and above this price range. However, uh, you, you know, you can't really compete with the resolution. It only shoots at 1080p. That's it. You don't have 4k. If that's a deal breaker, sorry about your luck. You know, I, I, what are you going to do? But in my opinion, that should never be a deal breaker, especially right now, because it, I mean, think of it this way. When you're looking, if you're watching this video right now, what device are you watching it on? Your cell phone? Can you really tell a difference at 1080p at 60 frames a second versus 4K? Even on my 4K TV downstairs, I can't really tell that much of a difference. Okay, that's my personal opinion. That, Like I said, that could be a deal breaker for you. I wouldn't let that hinder your options here. Okay, it's not that serious. This is an excellent camera. If you're a beginner, you probably won't even 
know how to use the benefits of 4K right off the bat anyways. And then if, if you get to the point where you wanna upgrade to a 4K, the other good thing about these cameras is they hold their value fairly well. I mean, if you look at Craigslist or any of these uh, site selling sites, you can still see T3i selling for, you know, three, four hundred dollars. And that came out, I don't even know how long ago. You know, this is the T7i I'm shooting with right now. So, I don't know. All these things are, are important to keep in mind, but I'm telling you, folks, this is an excellent camera. 2018, I'm still on the market looking all the time. I don't see anything to replace it for a beginner. I, I mean, if you've got something, leave it in the description below. I don't know. I, I can't find anything. Unless you're going to go up to the $2,000 range, you know, and really get into some of those features. Other than 4K, you know, tell me. Tell me another one that's better right now still. That could change in a month. If you're watching this in 2019, this, you know, obviously there could be five cameras that come out between now and then. But for right now, 2018, it's August. I believe the T7i is the best camera for beginners on the market today still. All right, folks. Uh, hey, thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe. And, and if you do want to buy this, I've got tons of videos, tons of videos showing demonstrations of how to do different things, tutorials. I've got a ton of sample videos on my page or on my, uh, I've got a ton of sample videos and stuff on my channel. Check it out. And uh, I don't know, that's it. I'm starting to ramble. So thank you for watching. Uh, have a fantastic day. Thanks.